Hello everyone and welcome to our 2020 New Mills Carol Service. Certainly like so much this year, this is a carol service with a difference as we've had to go online. There's so much about our usual carol service which would flout COVID restrictions such as the anticipated large crowd of people, lots of loud singing and blowing of brass instruments and different people up and down to the front taking part in the big catering afterwards. It just made it impossible for us to do anything like what we normally do. So we thought that an online version where you can at least watch from the comfort of your own home whenever and as many times as you wish might actually be the most doable and at the end of the day still a very meaningful way for us to give our wonderful Saviour whose birth we celebrate due praise and glory. Of course we miss being together and singing together as a large congregation. And it's my prayer that we'll all be back together for Christmas 2021. For this year, perhaps if you are able, why not after this service, lift the phone and call a couple of people from church just to say hello and see how they're doing. Or if you're more technologically savvy, why not do a festive Zoom coffee with another family or two sometime in the very near future. Keeping that connectivity is so important. The only other announcement I have for now is that our Christmas morning service will also be online and will be available to watch from 9 o'clock that morning. You can tune in whenever suits and I trust you will make the time to do so at some point early in the day. It's only a short service and then we'll be back in church next Sunday the 27th at 11.30 when Philip will be taking his final service for us as assistant in New Mills. Various people will be involved in this service as you'll see and I want to thank in advance all who have made themselves available and were willing to come and record their various parts over the past few weeks. I hope you enjoy and are truly blessed through our Christmas worship. Most items will appear unannounced. We're here to give our Saviour the highest praise today. He was born in Bethlehem some 2,000 years ago. However, his birth had been in God's planning from the very beginning and promised many times long before it happened. Listen to these words from the prophet Isaiah, some 700 years before Jesus' birth. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government there shall be no end. So let's join in with New Mills Carol Service 2019 and sing Who is he in yonder stall at whose feet the shepherds fall? Tis the Lord. O oh, wondrous story, tis the Lord, the King of glory.
let's take some time now and we'll pray together. Let's pray. Sovereign Father, the angel of old announced it, as he said, she will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And all this to place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. And as that angel announced the good news of your son coming, he looked back to the promises you made to your people, and he pointed for us to see how you had paved and prepared the way for this wonderful day. As the angel announced the good news of your son coming, he told us of Jesus' wonderful purpose to rescue us, to redeem us, to save us. As the angel announced the good news of your son coming, he told us to look at ourselves and see the reason we need this. As the angel announced the good news of your son coming, he told us what all this means, that God is now with us. But Father, we confess all of that washes over us far too easily. We aren't grabbed, we aren't captivated by the gracious miracle on display for us. The angel's announcement fades into the background. It's muffled out by all the sounds of the world. So Father, for this year, for this Christmas, for this time that we spend together, for people like us, people like us who live in a world that's so full of darkness and doubt and fear and pain and suffering, will you have the light of this season shine into our lives? Will you have us come with wonder and awe to see afresh what you have done? That you've sent your Son, that Christ has come, and he has come for us, the weak, the weary, the heavy laden, the runaway rebellious children that we are. He has come for people like us. And he's come so that we can come home. Father, show us that all afresh. Open our eyes to it. And open our hearts to it. And all of this we pray in your son's name. Amen. The reading is taken from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 24. The birth of Jesus is announced. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. Amen. In the bleak midwinter, frosty winds made moan. Earth stood hard as iron, water like stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow. Our God, 
heaven cannot hold him or the earth sustain. Heaven and earth shall flee away when he comes to reign. In the bleak midwinter, a stable place suffice. The Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ. Angels and archangels may have gathered there. Cherubim and seraphim throng the air. Yet his mother only in her maiden bliss worship the What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. And if I were a wise man, Yet, what can I give him, give my heart? And if I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet, what can I give him? my heart. We wanted to include our boys and girls this year in our carol service as they present their nativity online. Thanks boys and girls and also mums and dads for preparing the children and sending through the various video clips and to Katie Best for piecing it all together for us. So just sit back and enjoy our children telling us this all-important, world-changing, history-making, eternity-shaping story. Welcome to your new Mills Nativity. Today we are going to tell you the story of the greatest journey ever. First we need a little help from you. When you hear these words, we need you to do some actions. Journey! Big one! Uh oh! Pan. In the story, there are four special journeys. Mary and Joseph, the wise men, and even the shepherds traveled a long way to celebrate the birth of Jesus. They were going to follow in their footsteps and travel those journeys too. Ready? Let's go! There was a couple called Mary and Joseph. They went on a journey all the way to Bethlehem. We're going on a journey, and it's going to be a big one, all the way to Bethlehem, because these are the ones that count us. Oh, uh, Romans, tall, scary Romans, we can't 
shouldn't jump over them. We can't crawl under them. Oh no! We have to walk between them. They went on their journey together. Soon they were going to marry. They were going to be a family because Mary was having a baby. The time came to have the baby, but where could Mary and Joseph stay? We're going on a journey. It's going to be a big one. We've got to find a place to stay because Mary's having a baby. No fake bouncy bed. We can't stay in a hotel. We can't stay in a spare room. No, we have to stay with the animals. Eat up. Eat up. There is no room in the end for them. So Mary wrapped the baby in strips of cloth and found a manger to lay the baby in. An angel appeared to some shepherds. This happens in a field nearby. The angel told them about the baby, so they went to see him with their arms. We're going on a journey. It's gonna be a big one. An angel came to see us and told us of a saviour. So we are going to welcome him and we'll find him in the manger. Oh no! Smelly, stinky, sheep pony! We can't fly over it, we can't tip it around it. Oh no! So we have to tread through it! Tread, squash, tread, squash, tread, squash, tread, squash. They rushed off to find the baby and everyone was amazed. It's just as the angel said, Give God their praise. Some wise men had seen a star in the sky and knew a king was to be born. So they followed the star and they went to worship and adore. We're going on a journey! It's going to be a big one! Following the shiny star to worship the baby king, we've got loads of presents gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They found him under thunder of joy. The wise men were so happy. Uh oh! <gasps> King Herod! Mean, nasty King Herod! We can't listen to Herod. We can't stay here with Jesus. Oh no! We'll have to leave another way. Humpty hump, clocky clock, humpty hump. They were careful not to tell King Herod and they travelled home a different way. It's been a long journey. It's been a long journey for the shepherds. It's been a long journey for the wise men. We've gone on a journey. But we're glad we did so. We met someone special. But who was it? Big brown eyes. Big and big cheeks. No eyes. Ten, ten tiny toes, toes on, on ten tiny feet. Why is Jesus? Quick, tell everyone. Go to one other way, humpy hum, clocky clock. Back through the sheep, poop, trench, watch, trench, 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 trench. Say goodbye to the animals. Eat up. Eat up. Jesus went on a journey. It really was the biggest one. 
all the way to heaven. Up because he came to save us. Jesus lived on earth with us. Because he loved us very much. Unexpected, would you believe after all we projected? Child in a manger, lonely and small, the weakest of all, unlikeliest hero, wrapped in his mother's shawl, just a child. Is this who we've waited for?
Today's Bible reading is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 6 to 15. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped them in cloths and placed them in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to the God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about.
This reading is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Let me introduce three of our folk who I've asked to share very briefly why Christmas is special to them. Here's Hetty, Jordan and Heidi as they reflect on this very special time of year. My four sisters and I grew up on a farm and we had an auntie who made Christmas very special with secrets, tricks and presents. I especially remember one year when she arrived with her presents. We were all disappointed and there was only one present, which was a box that said fragile on it. It was very heavy and she told us to be careful with it. On the days before Christmas, every opportunity we had, we poked it and shook it and tried to guess what was in it. When we were eventually allowed to open the box on Christmas Day, it was full of grit. Then we found a note in the box telling us to go to the barn where we would find our real presents. That year we had a pogo stick and stilts, presents that would be too big to put under the tree. That year taught me a lesson which has lived with me ever since. We can have Christmas all organised, but the real gift is in a manger in a barn, the baby Jesus. When this baby grew up, he said something wonderful in John 10.10. 10, I am come that you might have life, life in all its fullness. Jesus Christ is the gift of God, the Son of God, who brings forgiveness and a purpose for every day of the year. My prayer is you would know him this Christmas day. Christmas is a lovely time of year, isn't it? I love the lights, the music, the coziness, the festive feeling in the air. It's a time for warm nights in with a Christmas movie on and a fire lit while the temperature plummets outside. But in the midst of all that, let us not forget who came to us at Christmas time. The prophet Isaiah tells us in Isaiah 9, 6 that he is wonderful counsellor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. And let us bring to mind what he has done for us. We're told in Isaiah 53, 5, that he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. I love Christmas and I love decorating my house. We have a box of tree ornaments that is unearthed from the attic every year and is very special to us. The ornaments aren't treasured for their monetary value but each random ornament kindles a warm memory for us. We have collected the ornaments for years and they range from an Anne of Green Gables bauble from Prince Edward Island to a small wooden manger scene I bought on a mission trip. We try to buy a tree decoration in different countries when we are on holiday. So each year we reminisce on precious memories as we place each ornament on a branch. 
In January, when we take our Christmas decorations down, I'll not throw the ornaments in the recycling with the tree, but I'll treat each one as a treasure and with special care as I tenderly store them for another tree, another year, another Christmas. In the final line of one of my favourite carols, In the Bleak Midwinter, the poet Christina Rossetti wonders, what can I give him, poor as I am? God has given us the perfect gift of his son, Jesus Christ. He has showered us with his love and his generosity without us having done anything to deserve this treasure. In our spiritual poverty, we have nothing to offer him in return. What could we possibly give him that he hasn't given us? Christ wants nothing more from us than our devotion and our heart. In my life, I have a much richer treasure than my Christmas tree ornaments, and it will last for all eternity. This gift of Jesus. My love for Jesus isn't just for this season when we reflect on his birth, and my relationship with him won't be thrown out in the recycling after Christmas either. Like my Christmas tree ornaments, I tenderly care for and treasure our relationship. I have given him the best gift he wants, my heart. Love incarnate, love divine Star and angels gave the sign Bow to babe on bended knee The Savior of humanity Unto us a child is born He shall reign forevermore No
There are many remarkable aspects to the Christmas story. I think one of the most amazing features is that we have here an incredible combination of the extraordinary sitting alongside the very ordinary. This is where we witness the infinite, eternal God, creator and sustainer of the entire universe, coming down to earth in the most obscure, ordinary, even grim circumstances. The theologians call it the incarnation, literally God appearing in human flesh, or as we sing, veiled in flesh, the Godhead see. Jesus Christ comes down to earth, fully God, yet fully human. There's much biblical evidence that the baby born in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago is no ordinary child. Think of the prophecies proclaimed centuries beforehand. Isaiah 9, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given written some 700 years before it happened. Micah, preaching around the same time, foretold, out of Bethlehem will come one who will be ruler over Israel. And there are several other ancient prophecies which find their exact fulfillment in Jesus' birth. Paul would later confirm to the Galatians in Galatians 4 verse 4, at just the right time, God sent forth his son. Not a minute too soon or too late. The birth of Jesus takes place under the watchful eye of the sovereign God, ensuring that every tiny detail rolls out according to his will and exact plan. This extraordinary event is also confirmed by supernatural occurrences. Shepherds out working in the fields. It isn't every night the sky lights up and they're surrounded by singing angels. Glory to God in the highest. Certainly a night never to be forgotten. Angels are busy during this whole time. One appears to Joseph, giving him instructions how to handle the potential embarrassment of his young, mysteriously pregnant fiancée. Quite a scandal for this righteous man. Another angel, Gabriel, appears to Mary, telling her the good news of the impending birth. And she struggles to see it as good news at first. But the angel reassures her, your child will be great. He will be called the son of the most high. His kingdom will never end. And so she's contented and able to treasure these thoughts in her heart. She even sings praise to God for honouring her to be the mother of a king. Angels are busy making preparations for and announcing the birth of this extraordinary child. Men from the faraway east travel a long distance to visit Jesus. How do they know to come to small town Bethlehem? Well, they spy a moving star in the night sky and follow it. It's probable that these Eastern visitors are astrologers, stargazers, but of Jewish origin, their ancestors having remained in Babylon post-exile. And they would have had some knowledge of old Jewish writings and prophecies. And so when this new star appears in the sky and starts to move in a westerly direction towards Israel, they sense a possible connection between it and ancient Jewish messianic promises. It's certainly significant enough to compel them to follow the star, travel overland upwards of a thousand miles until it stops over Bethlehem, where they meet the baby Jesus. And they just know that this tiny baby is a king like no other. No wonder they come laden with lavish gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. So plenty of supernatural evidence that this is an extraordinary child. And we haven't even touched hardly on the virgin birth. And yet there's also evidence that the circumstances of Jesus' birth aren't just ordinary. They're humiliating. 
A mother at full term is forced to journey on the back of a donkey to complete a Roman census. She goes into labor, not a bed to be found, and she ends up giving birth in a freezing cold, stinking cowhouse, probably vermin infested. No sanitized labor wards, no midwives or consultant obstetricians on hand, no pethidine epidurals or gas and air, not even a blow heater for some warmth, just a bit of leftover hay. Even by the standards of the day, it's a health hazard. And it marks the start of a very ordinary childhood and adolescence, a very ordinary carpenter apprenticeship, Really a life of relative obscurity. At one point, the family have to flee to Egypt as refugees to escape from a paranoid king who's after Jesus' blood. A tough enough early life. And all of that before he begins a three-year itinerant ministry. No home to call his own. An arduous, relentless ministry, constantly battling against religious, political, and indeed demonic adversaries. And then he's arrested, tried, and sentenced to death on a cross. It all amounts to a warped conspiracy of barbaric injustice. It looks like the ultimate humiliation. Yet we know the cross is the culmination of God's divinely sanctioned plan. The ordinary intersects with the extraordinary at the cross. Because it's through that very human atrocity that Jesus fulfills his whole divine purpose in coming to earth. He takes upon his own innocent shoulders the full burden of our sins and dies a humiliating death in order to gain victory and life for all who believe in him. God's plan to save his people from their sins is fully executed on the cross. Jesus is our amazing God, our all-powerful, all-knowing, all-seeing King of heaven, who was willing to set aside his majesty, come down to this dysfunctional world and die our death. Such is the depth of his unfailing love for us. And he's still willing to enter into our very ordinary, humble, often messed up lives and journey with us through all our joys and especially our sorrows. So if you're not really looking forward to Christmas because COVID has disrupted it or because things aren't good at home or relationships are tense at work or you've recently suffered deep loss and you're dreading what 2021 might bring, remember this amazing Jesus who is God and who holds the whole world in his hands, knows exactly where you are and what you're struggling with. He understands lousy. He knows what the humble and ordinary, the tough grind and the hard knocks feel like. He's been to the place where life sucks and has the scars of nails to prove it. Remember, you are precious to this amazing, incredible, extraordinary Jesus. And he has such love in his heart for you that he wants to walk with you through every day of your life. Good days, bad days, ordinary days as you go to your work, as you run a wash through, taxi the kids, do the weekly shop, attend the hospital, nip down to the gym, whatever. The challenge this Christmas is don't exclude the one whose birthday it's all about. Don't deny yourself the life-changing difference. This extraordinary, marvelous, savior, king, and burden-bearing friend wants to make to your life right now. Make sure you ask this Jesus to walk with you through every moment of every day to help, support, and even carry you when needed. Be sure that you've placed your life and your future in the hands of this incredible Jesus, born in the most ordinary of circumstances in Bethlehem, 
and who died the most horrific death at Calvary. He holds the future and he'll hold you fast. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He is our ever-present help. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening. I hope our carol service, with a difference, has been a real blessing to your hearts as you have sung and listened and reflected. Thank you again to all who have taken part and a special word of thanks to Sam and Rachel Leslie for recording and editing this service for us. It's a huge amount of work and it's greatly appreciated. Do you think about connecting up with one or two others after you've watched this service? And remember to tune in again on Christmas morning anytime from 9 a.m. once the prezzies have all been opened up. Just for now, we say the grace together. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>